Hey there, welcome to another video. Now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the differences between WordPress and Webflow. Now this is slightly different to any of the other content that I've done in the past. Now if you've been following me for a little while, you'll know that originally my content was based around how to build websites fast and efficiently using WordPress and Elementor as a page builder tool. That then progressed onto how to actually run and manage your own web design business and how to go about finding clients. Now I wanna share this video with you today because it's important to let you know about the changes that have happened within my agency and my thought process and the direction that I'm kind of going in moving forward. Now before we talk about Webflow, I just wanna to touch on why I am here. Why am I talking about Webflow when I'm currently using WordPress? Now WordPress has been awesome for me, it's been awesome for my agency, and it's been great for my clients over the past few years. But I'm now in a position where I'm questioning whether that is still the case. Now if you use WordPress yourself, then you're probably aware that it does have quite a few problems that come with it. Now recently, and this isn't a standalone experience, uh, I received an email from a client saying that their website had been hacked, which is a huge pain in the ass. Not only for my client, but it's actually a pain in the ass for me or the team that has to fix this problem. Now there is an easy solution for this, and that is just make sure that your WordPress website is up to date or your plugins are up to date as well. Now that's great, but actually if you take a step back and think about it, why should we have to update our WordPress website and our plugins multiple times a month or even each, you know multiple times a week i'd probably say that it's not really fair to expect our clients to do that and also it's not always fair to expect them to sign up to a maintenance package in order for you to do that for them so yeah i had this scenario where we had a client that the website had been hacked and we had to go through and just clean it up so this experience a couple of weeks ago was kind of the nail in the coffin for me it it, it kind of made me take a step back and think there must be a better solution. So I then started investigating Webflow. But coming back to this story, there's been multiple scenarios where I've had similar problems from other clients where their website had been hacked or there's been other underlying problems such as a plugin has been updated and it's caused a conflict or you've updated a plugin or you've updated WordPress or you've updated Elementor for example and something is broken. Now you shouldn't have to manage a website and kind of have this small surge of anxiety <laughs> Every time you hit that update button, you need, you know you need to run your backups, you run update, and then you just pray and hope to God that things are going to continue working on the other side. Like it's it's not a very healthy position to be in, you know, mentally. You know, that very small thing can cause a lot of anxiety if things go wrong. If it goes wrong and your website breaks, you even need to figure out how to roll back or you need to figure out how to fix it, which is gonna cost you time and it's gonna cost you development time and, and cost you money, which isn't great. That's kind of the biggest pain point with WordPress and Elementor is plugin updates and you could say security. You know, if you're not updating your plugins, there will be a robot out there that is targeting specific plugins, likely one, likely one of those that you haven't updated and it's gonna breach your site. So security is a big deal with WordPress. It is the most popular CMS, so you know it's gonna be very prone to hacking because it's a very easy and, and broad target. WordPress is still a great solution and if you were to look at Elementor alone, like Elementor was an absolute game changer for me with my career and coming from a coding background, actually for the longest time, I tried so hard to not jump onto the no-code train that, that seemed to have existed and, and had left the station. You know, I didn't want to get on that train, but actually, as time progressed and I, I played around with Elementor, like, I was honestly blown away by its competency. You know, I was able to produce websites in like 30% of the time, or you know, 60% faster. That's probably bad maths, but essentially, I could do them a lot quicker, which meant that I was able to make more money within my business because I was able to turn websites around a lot faster and also like my clients can have a on-page real-life custom uh, experience when they're updating their content you know, it was it was a game changer for the time but as time goes on I am questioning whether that is still the case now on top of security updates plugin dependencies we've got speed now I myself have for the longest time struggled with trying to make my WordPress and Elementor website rank fast in GT metrics or any uh, website page speed tool. Now I really struggled to get that really really high fast quick website that everybody wants but while using WordPress and Elementor. And the reason for that is Elementor for for whatever reason just causes so much bloat on on the site 
And if you're looking at it from a tech code perspective, even just looking at the source code of the website, you'll see that they have so many nested divs and sections and, and elements that just it just feels massively unnecessary. So there is a problem with bloat and, and everyone's aware of it and you know Elementor specifically are investing more money to try and fix this, but it doesn't seem to be happening very fast. So ran over with, with WordPress, you know, I've, I've kind of just slated it there. I'd sound very bitter, but I, I do want to say that as a tool, WordPress is a very good solution because it's open source and a lot of people like using it. However, it does cause a lot of problems as well. And as a web design business owner, I want to be making sure that I'm using the most up to date current technologies, but they also need to work for our agency and they need to work for our clients. Now that brings me on to Webflow. Now I was introduced to Webflow about two, two to three years ago, probably closer to three years ago, I discovered Webflow when it was in its infancy. And even back then I was, you know, I was blown away by its, its competency. It was like Elementor, it was a drag and drop visual editor so you could drag components onto your uh, design canvas and it would just write HTML for you. And it gives you some nice uh, graphical user interface elements so you can amend padding, font sizes, colors, all of the sort of CSS style assets for every component on your site. It could all be done within a visually no code user friendly way. So back then, that was a game changer for me and I almost went down the route of using Webflow then, but that's when I then discovered Elementor and actually Elementor was able to do all of the things that Webflow could do. However, I could keep using WordPress, which is what I was familiar with and what my clients were familiar with. So that's kind of why I stuck with WordPress and Elementor. Now fast forward three years, I'm, I'm now in a position where I'm questioning Elementor and WordPress and I'm considering using Webflow. Now Webflow, from what I've seen so far, is a phenomenal tool. It's incredibly easy to use, not only for, for me or the team that are building the websites, it's actually really easy to use for our clients. It gives them a very simple experience when they're trying to upload and edit content, which is a big deal when you're trying to deliver a good service to your customers. Now talking about delivering a good service, things with Webflow, they just work. Everything just works. And the part of the reason behind that is it is all on a self-hosted managed solution which means that you build your website with Webflow and you host your website with Webflow. Now there are options for you to export the code and host it somewhere else, but you can't then use Webflow's content management system. Now the content management system is essentially allowing you to create similar to WordPress, custom post types and a blog and a database driven website. If you want all of that stuff, you have to keep it self hosted on Webflow. Now that you could say is, is a minor drawback, but for me, I actually don't think it's a big deal. I actually really like that it's an all-in-one solution because as I say, it makes things a lot easier. You're not having to find reliable third-party hosting that you can dump your website on. It's, it's just all in one place and it's gonna cost you one single fee. Now talking about fees, that then brings us on to pricing. Now Webflow has been considered expensive, but actually in the grand scheme of things, I think it's very inexpensive. And here's why. For you to launch a single site on Webflow, it's gonna cost you $15 per month. If you want the content management system as well, it's only $20 per month. Now, if you compare that to reliable, high quality web hosting for WordPress, you're going to be paying that anyway. Except you're paying this and you're getting a super fast website you're getting everything managed all under one roof and you're getting fantastic support that Webflow supplies you, which is awesome. Now from a actual technical web designer development point of view, Webflow has endless opportunities because it kind of, it, it, I'll say kind of, it actually emulates real coding opportunities for you. So you use the drag and drop page builder. It gives you very clean HTML. You can pretty much write some really nice complex CSS and you can also write some real nice JavaScript if you want on page screen animations and parallax and all of those sort of things. Now on top of that, you can go as far to write custom code as well. And it just gives you some real endless opportunities in terms of what is possible with Webflow. All you have to do is head over to the Webflow showcase and just look at some of the websites that have been submitted there. They are phenomenal. And actually one thing I found looking at it from a designer developer point of view is a lot of the things that you can do with Webflow do not seem possible with Elementor and WordPress, or if it is, it's gonna be a lot more difficult for you to achieve it. 
Now, I might be wrong. Anyone's welcome to call me out on that, but that's my opinion from what I've seen so far. Now, comparing WordPress and Webflow, there are, there are trade-offs. There's pricing, as I've already mentioned. Webflow, you have to pay monthly for. WordPress is open source, so essentially it's free, but you do have to pay for reliable hosting, so there is that. WordPress and Elementor gives you a real you know, no code solution where you can really build websites quite easily, which is great. Webflow, you need to know a little bit more about how HTML and CSS works, maybe a bit of JavaScript and how they sort of communicate with each other. You don't need to know how to write the code, but it really does help you if you know how they communicate with each other. Whereas with Elementor, it's honestly just a plug and play, drag and drop, no code solution for anyone, you know, even the beginners that are looking to get started, which is attractive for them. So I'm kind of rambling here, but actually for me at the moment, where my head's at is Webflow is an incredibly attractive solution for me, my team, my agency, and actually for my clients. I don't wanna be running an agency where I get an email like once a week saying, oh, my website's been hacked, can you fix it? Because yes, I, although we can build, build that time, we don't wanna be doing that work. We wanna be actually producing kick-ass websites for you know, previous clients that are coming back to us or new clients that are looking for a website. We don't wanna be wasting our time or spending our time working on fixing the solutions that should just work. So that's kind of why I'm, I'm leaning towards Webflow because it's a solution that just works. We can still produce websites at a good speed. We can produce them fast. We can produce them to be fast and we can produce some real kick-ass websites using it. So I am gonna be looking at offering a complete no stress solution to any of the clients within the agency. Now, if you've got any questions about Webflow or how that compares to Elementor, please do let me know down in the comments. If you've used Webflow yourself, let me know how you're getting on with it. I'd, I'd be super intrigued. It's still relatively early days for me in, in the grand scheme if you compare my experience with web, uh, web uh, WordPress, sorry. If you compare my Webflow experience to WordPress, then you know I'm still relatively new to Webflow. So please do let me know of your experience down in the comments. I really appreciate it. Also, if you found this valuable, please do give it a thumbs up. I'd really like that. And also hit subscribe, hit the bell notification too, and you'll be notified of any future releases. But that's all I've got for you today, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.